What is going on everyone? Welcome back to World According to Briggs and a video that I hope will answer the question I get asked the most. What state should I move to? I get that question every single day, sometimes several times a day via email or in the comment section of a video. I even get asked that on my other channel that has nothing to do with relocating or geography or anything like that. As the pandemic starts to fade for, I don't know, like the third time, people start to move. There are a million and one reasons people switch states. Most of the time it has to do with work or family. They're not making enough money someplace, or they want to move to be near family or actually start a family. Those are the most common reasons I get asked, what state should I move to? Today's video is my opinion based on things that I've learned over the last year. So if you're looking for some hardcore stat video, this ain't it. However, I will be referencing different stats to support why I feel this is a good option and for who? Who should be moving to this place? Now, since I said this is my opinion, there's a certain portion of the population that just started salivating. Ooh, I get to tell him why his opinion's wrong. Nobody's opinion's ever wrong. It's their opinion. But keep in mind, every state, every town, every city has bad things like crime, poverty, bad weather, and drugs. That's life. Normally, if a place has a lot of any of those, it will be affordable. If it doesn't, it's expensive. I say that so I don't have all those comments. Don't tell people to move here. This state's horrible. We're 15th in poverty, and a guy down the street from me does the weed. Yes, Marge, let's avoid the entire state because your neighbor has glaucoma. At the end of this video, I will tell you some states that have been popular in the past, but I don't think they're going to be a good place to move in the coming years. All right, let's take a look. Number 10. Michigan. Now, I'm sure a whole bunch of you just groaned. Keep in mind, the entire state is not Detroit and Flint. This is a beautiful state if you don't mind cold weather. They get some brutally harsh winters, but the state for the most part is affordable and great for families. If you could bring a job there, let's say you're one of the digital nomads or something like that, you could work from home. This is one of the best options in the country right now. Everyone always talks about, you know, Detroit and Flint and how horrible they are and just this and that. And I'm one of them. I always bring up the bad stats of Detroit and parts of Michigan. But in reality, you have places like Marysville, which is north of Detroit. They have a crime rate that's actually 66% lower than the national average. Their cost of living is 7% lower than the national average. Grand Rapids is in a bad place to live. East Grand Rapids, which obviously is a suburb. You got Traverse City, which is great. If you want to live in the Upper Peninsula, you got places like Kingsford and a bunch of little small towns that are great places to live. Like I said, cold is your main issue in Michigan, unless of course you're in Detroit, then it's your safety and the cold. So who is Michigan good for? If you're a digital nomad and can bring a job, this is a great place to move. Pretty much like any place that's inexpensive, and that's the thing with Michigan. They're very inexpensive, both in housing and cost of living. Retirees don't usually dig the cold, so it's probably not the best for them, but they have beautiful summers, cold winters, and it's a great place to raise a family. Again, like I said, outside of Flint and Detroit and a few other places, there's plenty of places in Michigan to fall in love with. Different organizations have this stat called opportunity. That basically gauges what are the opportunities for women, minorities, people with disability, things of that nature. And they rank the states by this. Michigan is ranked fifth out of 50 states. They're number five. Number nine. North Carolina. North Carolina has been picking up steam in probably the last decade or so. The Raleigh, Durham, Chapel Hill little triangle of love there, that's been popular for quite some time. Asheville in the, I'd say the last five years has started picking up some steam. Charlotte, of course, is a great city. Like all cities, these places have some crime, but nothing compared to what some other states in that area have. Doesn't matter if you're down by the coast or into the hills, North Carolina is a beautiful state. The education system in North Carolina always seems to rank in the top 10, and I'm not just talking colleges, grade school, high school, and on to the universities. They just do a really good job here in North Carolina. On top of it, the state is in good shape financially. They call it fiscal stability. North Carolina is doing things right there. Again, they're another state that always seems to be in the top 10 for that. 
So this means their economy is doing great, they have jobs, they do have some poverty like every place, but it's not horrible. Depending on what part of the state you're in, the winters can be a little harsh, but that's usually up in the hills. Dotted throughout the state, you have a lot of really good small towns. Pinehurst is an excellent place to live. Then you have the major cities, the metro areas that have some really nice suburbs. Up in the Raleigh-Durham area, you have Morrisville and Chapel Hill. Wonderful places to live. Might be a little expensive, but they're great places to live. And that goes for all these little towns dotted throughout the Outer Banks. Outer Banks is great. It's like this little strip of islands that kind of separate North Carolina's mainland from the Atlantic Ocean. This is a great place to vacation, and if you could swing it and live here, even better. The only problem there is you got to worry about the occasional hurricane blowing through and taking your house away. So who should move to a place like North Carolina? Anyone. You're retired and you want to live someplace in North Carolina? Plenty of places to choose from that are affordable. If you're young, want to start a family, again, North Carolina is a great place to do that. Number eight, Wisconsin. Wisconsin, in my opinion, is the best state to raise a family. This is very much a family oriented state. Normally you can pull that off in a small town, maybe even a city, but this entire state is just family friendly. Milwaukee's about the only place that has some crime and they're not as bad as they were, let's say five years ago, three years ago. They've gotten so much better and it's becoming a great place to live again. And you got Madison, the Eau Claire area. Oshkosh isn't bad and either is Appleton. Milwaukee has some great suburbs and neighborhoods that you could find to live there that are excellent. Elm Grove is one of them. Whitefish Bay, Greendale, Wisconsin. These are all great places to live and raise a family. You could find tons of small towns in this state just waiting for you to raise a family and live. Now, yeah, like any place up in this area, it's gonna get cold in the winters and that's their biggest knock. There's not a lot wrong with Wisconsin once you get past the winter. If you're like me, you look forward to winter, so this doesn't bother me at all. When you start looking at the numbers for Wisconsin, they have a great economy, so they have jobs for everyone. They don't have a ton of poverty. When it comes to opportunity, they're ranked ninth in the nation and their education is ranked eighth. Other than some of the cities, their cost of living is pretty low here as is their housing. So who should move to Wisconsin? I would say people that are looking to start a family or buy a home, settle down. That's the type of place Wisconsin is. Number seven, New Hampshire and Vermont. That's right, you get a twofer on this one. These states are very similar, and whenever I'm doing any kind of rankings, they're usually right next to each other. Their stats are always, always really close. New Hampshire's crime rate, they're the best in the nation, and Vermont is the third best in the nation. In case you're wondering, Maine is number two. That whole little area, nobody commits much crime up there. Vermont and New Hampshire are always in the top 10 for natural environment. Their economies aren't the best. I mean, one's ranked 15th and the other one's ranked 19th, but still that's better than three quarters of the country. Their biggest knock is they can get expensive, both of them. Their housing is a little tad bit higher than you'd probably wanna see, but they're not terrible. Where they both shine, though, are the small towns dotted all across both these states. They're just great small towns in most cases. It's not hard to find one that'll suit you. So who should move here? I wouldn't say they're the best for families. There's better states for that. But if you're like a digital nomad that makes a good amount of money and is looking for a small town with great outdoors, either Vermont or New Hampshire would be best for you. Again, rough winters, beautiful summers. Number six, Nebraska. You could probably lump Kansas and Iowa into this one too, but I think out of the three, Nebraska is the best. They have a really low cost living, their crime isn't terrible, and their housing prices are affordable. And they got plenty to choose from. This is another state where you could move to the big city of Lincoln, which isn't that big, but it's not terrible. Omaha, again, it's big, it's got some problems, but not compared to other states. Where they shine, though, is the rural areas and the small towns. They've got a ton of great ones. Nebraska is another state that's always in the top 10 when it comes to education and natural environment. You put those two together and it tells you it's a great place to raise a family. Some good cities and small towns you could look at to move to in Nebraska. Batrice, that's good. That's south of Lincoln in between that and the Kansas border. Hastings is excellent. So is Columbus, Nebraska. If you talk to anyone from Nebraska, the small towns are a big thing to them. What's funny about the place is even Lincoln and Omaha, they kind of have that small town vibe in a lot of ways. I grew up with a girl in Redondo Beach, California, and she moved to Sydney, Nebraska with her husband many years ago, probably 20 years ago. She watches my videos all the time. And a while back on Facebook, she said I should look 
at where she lives, Sydney, Nebraska. This is a great small town. I mean, statistically speaking, I go off her experience and what she told me. I've never been there, but statistically speaking, this is a great place to live. Cost of living is low. Houses are low. Schools are great. Employment is okay. I mean, it's a small town, but they do have some jobs. There is a ton of places like that to choose from in Nebraska. Nebraska is another state where anyone should move there. I mean, it's cheap cheap housing. If you got your own job and you're bringing it with you and you work with the computer, even better, but they do have some jobs here also. If you have a problem with being bored, you know, you want a little crazy nightlife, don't move to Nebraska. You won't find it. You'll just be wondering why you ever moved to Nebraska. Now, if you're a person that's not looking for a crazy nightlife, Nebraska's for you because they don't have one. You won't have to have that awkward conversation with your Tinder date about going to the club and dancing and have to admit you can't dance because you lack any form of rhythm. That's me, by the way. That's why I married my wife. She hates dancing. I hate dancing because I can't. If I try and dance, I look like a guy with epilepsy that's touching an electric fence. Number five, South Carolina. Over the last couple of years, I've sort of fallen in love with South Carolina, especially the low country. It's actually one of those places I've been thrown around in my head to maybe retire there. Definitely in the low country like Bluffton or Charleston. If I move to Charleston, I'm going to have to call my favorite real estate agent slash superhero, Natasha the Pulse. Okay, Briggs, while I may not be an actual superhero, I would love to help your fans and show them why Charleston is so special if they find themselves in town. South Carolina has some great places to live. Around Charleston, you got Hanahan, and then you also have Mount Pleasant. Up north, you got Simpsonville and Malden. But if it were me, I would stay in the Charleston area, maybe even go down to Bluffton. Now, what's strange about South Carolina is I think they shine when it comes to a lot of their cities. Charleston, like I'd said, Hilton Head area, Greenville. Columbia has some nice places. These are great suburbs and nice cities around there. A lot of their small towns kind of suck, so this is a little bit different from most other states, but I really like their cities. And a lot of it has to do with the people, too. People of South Carolina are just extremely friendly and good people, for the most part. They also have a pretty strong economy in South Carolina right now. Number four, Idaho. Idaho is another state that's been popular for a very long time. Pretty much since California started to suck, Idaho became very popular. People have been flooding up there for a long time. Sort of slowed down in the last few years, but it's been consistent. These days, it's not just Californians. You got some Oregons moving into Idaho and some of the southern states that, you know, people just decided they've had enough of, I don't know, the crime and poverty in the southern states like Mississippi, Alabama, Louisiana, Arkansas. They're heading to Idaho. Idaho has a great economy. They're actually ranked third in the nation right now. And the economic stability or fiscal stability of the state is number four. So they're doing good. Natural environment here is a big one, especially if you like things like fishing and camping. Move to Idaho. You'll fall in love. Just visit and you'll start making plans to live there. Every one of my friends that moved to Idaho, they absolutely love the state. There's a few in Coeur d'Alene, two in... Pocatello, one in Twin Falls, and then one of my best friends and his wife lives in Moscow or Moscow. The spelling tells you Moscow, the locals tell you Moscow. Sort of like really close to where I live. It's spelt Aloha, but the locals call it Aloha here in Oregon. If you're thinking about moving to Idaho, there's a lot of really good places to choose from. I'd look at Hayden. Eagle is really good. Garden City, Idaho is pretty good. Post Falls. And Boise, for a bigger city, is a really nice place to live. Number three, Utah. The Beehive State is probably the only state I think statistically is a better place to raise a family. What I find strange about this state is it hasn't had that big rush like, let's say, Idaho, Colorado has in the past, Texas is having right now. Utah's always been a great place to move to, but it really just never caught on. I think a lot of that has to do with the aura of the religion thing there. That aura helps with a lot of different things. It's got low crime, good schools, pleasant neighborhoods. Even though most of the state would be considered a desert state, I mean, they have beautiful mountains and things like that, but it's not like this lush green place like I like. Even though it's not the type of climate or terrain I'd want to live in, I still recognize this is one of the best states to live in right now. If you've ever thought about moving to Utah, you're going to probably look at any place along Interstate 15 because any place worth living is going to be really near that interstate from St. George to Ogden. Fruit Heights is great. 
Pleasant Grove, Bountiful, South Ogden, Provo, American Fork, Spanish Fork for that matter. These are all great places to start your search for where you want to live if you want to move to Utah. One that doesn't have the best stats but I've been to and I really like it is Brigham City. Very low key, mellow place to live. When it comes to stats that kind of prove why it's a good place to live, the economy. They're number one in economy when it comes to the fiscal stability or how things are working. They're ranked number five. When it comes to their crime, they're the eighth best in the nation. They do pretty good when it comes to healthcare as well. They're in the top 10. As is the education system of Utah. Utah's a great place no matter who you are. If you want to retire there, great. Raise a family there, great. Digital nomad, perfect. Utah is a perfect place for anyone to move to. Unless you're looking to live on a tropical island like Hawaii, then it's not perfect for you. Number two, Virginia. The northern section of Virginia has always been popular, not really by anything that was going on there. I mean, it is nice, but it's not like the economy was really, really good. Houses were really low in price. It's a nice place to live, but really its popularity comes from being so close to Washington, D.C., right across the Potomac River from Washington, D.C. Places like Alexandria and Arlington are just filled with people that work for the government. But places like Richmond and Norfolk, they've all been gaining popularity. I mean, they've always been a little popular. These days, more and more people are heading that way. I got an email from a guy in Virginia that said Lynchburg is just blowing up and people are moving there all the time. I haven't seen any real data to support that. I mean, people are moving there. It's not blowing up by any stretch of the imagination. Other places that are gaining popularity are Newport News and Hampton, Virginia. If I were gonna move to Virginia right now, I like Manchester, which is down by Richmond, and the area around Covington, Virginia, which is really close to the West Virginia border, out in the George Washington National Forest. Actually, it's not just George Washington's National Forest, they threw Thomas Jefferson in there too. If you start looking at the stats that people really are concerned with, like natural environment, crime corrections, healthcare, education, economy, things like that, almost everything in those categories Virginia has in the top 10 or really close to the top 10 like number 15 to number 13 something like that so from a stat point of view Virginia is a solid place to move all right before we get to number one don't forget we have another channel called on this day we'd love it if you went over there and subscribe watch some videos things like that also at the end of this video I'm gonna list some of the places that didn't make the list that you probably thought should have all right on to number one and number one, Washington State. Washington has gained an incredible amount of popularity in recent years. It has all the things people are looking for statistically. If you look at the poll numbers, depending on what company did the research, Washington is always there in like the top five normally. Education, number four. Economy, number four. Fiscal stability, they're number six. Infrastructure, they're number three. Their health care is number eight. The worst thing they have is opportunity. That's the one for, you know, how are things looking for minorities, women, and disabled Americans. They're ranked number 25. They're still middle of the pack. Nothing in Washington sucks. They got a homeless situation in Seattle and it rains a little too much. It's a beautiful state. It's not too far from where I live. I go there all the time. I'm always up in Seattle, always in, you know, the southern section of Washington. On top of all that goodness, they don't have state income tax. And here's the thing about Washington. If you want to move to a state like that and you don't want to have to deal with all the rain, you move to the eastern section of the state, which has all the nice things, not as many trees and not nearly as much rain. If anyone ever asks me which states I should move to, Washington usually is good for everyone. If you work in tech, even more so. If I was looking to Washington, there's a few places I'd move to. Point Roberts is the first one. I've wanted to move there forever. Bellingham is nice. Mill Creek, Mercer Island, very expensive to live there, but it's a nice place to live. Camas down in the southern section is good. And of course, Ridgefield, which is down near Vancouver, Washington and Portland. All right, so let's talk about states that didn't make the list and why I didn't add them. California. Okay, California has been popular forever. Everyone loved California for the longest time. They just have far too much stuff going on there that's negative. It kind of overshadows the great weather, the great economy, things like that. Out of control homelessness, cost of living and cost of housing is gone through the roof. It's really not worth it now. That's why so many people are leaving. They still have more people going in. Not nearly what they used to, but you know what I mean. Another one is Oregon, my home state. Oregon is probably one of the most beautiful states we have. The downside is we have a lot of problems here with the cost of living going through the roof, cost of housing's raising too high, and of course, 
our ever-present homeless situation in Portland, Salem, and now even Bend, Oregon is having an issue with a lot of homeless people. I'm not ragging on the homeless people. They're in a bad situation, whether it's bad luck, mental defect, addiction issues, whatever the problem is, they're on the street and they need help. It's just really bad when you're trying to live a life in Portland or run a business and there's tents out in front of your business or your condo. The other one missing is Texas. Texas has become very popular in the last decade or so. People from all over the country have been flooding there because they had jobs, good economy, relatively safe in most areas, and housing prices were really reasonable. But here's the problem. Like California and Oregon, their popularity, I think in the near future, is gonna start to work against them. This is why. More people means more fire departments, hospitals, police, things like that. More public services, basically. More public services means more taxes. As population density rises in cities like Dallas, Fort Worth, Houston, whatever, you're gonna start seeing more crime and a bunch of other issues. It's what happened to Portland, Oregon. They're a victim of their own success and popularity. All right, that's today's video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Hope you got some information out of it. Now go out. Have a great day. Be nice to each other.